So in this video we're building a force feedback steering wheel. Force feedback steering wheels give you the sensation of actually driving on the road. Not like the sort of cheapest steering wheels you can get for your computer or PlayStation, whatever. When you turn it, you're just, you're just turning. You're not getting any feedback at all about what the car is actually doing on the road. So these force feedback steering wheels obviously have a motor at one end and it's feeding back to you through the wheel the sensation of being on the road. You can of course buy these from the shops, but the prices go from insane to ludicrous. I was just searching around YouTube, I've seen lots of projects where people have built their own force feedback sort of setup. The setup. Uh, problem with those ones is that they've got big DC motors, I'm not sure where they're getting from, they're hugely expensive and I want to be able to build one, well, maybe they're not, but I want to build one quite easily. Uh, so I started pulling this printer apart and I found there's a big DC motor in there with a belt drive, I was going to use that in this, this other project here, but uh, the key factor for these force feedback steering wheels is torque and the more torque I assume the more torque the better because when you look at any of the advertising for the force feedback steering wheels they all quote, start quoting the amount of torque on the wheel because obviously the stronger it is the more realistic you're going to feel and this little DC motor in this project just wouldn't have the guts to give you that sort of feedback so I was thinking what could I use readily available and high torque to give me the best sort of result so I went down to local local second hand dealers and found this cordless impact driver for $20 so it was ideal for the situation so I pulled it apart and got the motor out of it impact drivers have planetary gearboxes so it's got a very small drive gear surrounded by planetary gears which give it a high amount of torque so I found an Arduino project which gets the feedback from the sim gain and then feeds that into the motor to give it the directions that it's got to turn and of course for that to work properly it needs to know where it is in the world or in its space so you need to use a, an encoder and of course the printer I pulled apart Initially to build this project did indeed have an encoder, most NG printers have encoders so I've used that encoder and that. So we've got a drive motor and we've got an encoding wheel which are the two main components and we need to put this into a 3D printed case and this is what I've come up with. So here's what I've come up with, it's going to use a battery, just a normal battery off our power drill. This will just sit on the back and there's a couple of lugs for the contacts to go on, just a couple of spade connectors so the battery will just drop on the back. I was going to use a laptop power supply but it just wouldn't have the current required to turn this motor over. On this end here we've got the, the boss mount and this boss mount will fit a regular steering wheel. I've got a steering wheel off the local auction site for I think it's about $25 so it'll just screw straight into that and I'll be able to use a regular old steering wheel. Uh, this will have paddle shifters and pedals if this works and spoiler alert if you're watching this video it must have worked so in the next video we'll have pedal shifters and um, pedals working. Inside the unit itself it's made of four pieces. We've got this section, this section, this section, this section. If we break into here we can see the part this from here through to here was what was inside the drill that I got from the second hand shop. This coupling part here will be PLA so I'm a bit concerned if it's going to withstand the torque. It's got a pin going through it and this is also PLA for the boss mount, it's also got a pin going through it. I think this is going to be the Achilles heel of the whole project. I don't even know how strong this is going to be. Down in here, this is our encoder ring. So this is what came off the printer, this is the holding part which holds the encoder. Here's the encoder sensor which screws onto this bracket. The project requires a H bridge and this one is um, good for 40 plus amps. When I looked at this switch on the actual drill I got, it said it went up to 15 amps, so hopefully this will be sufficient and won't burn out with the load because uh, when you're fighting against the wheel, it's going to use a lot more load perhaps. And down the bottom, we've got the Arduino, and this is a Leonardo. You can't use an Uno for the project, you have to use a Leonardo because it's got a particular chip which supports all the USB uh, connectivity. And I've got a F craft sort of plug here so in here once we're done we'll plug in the um, pedals and pedal shifting bits and pieces. So next thing I'm going to do is print the top and bottom half and see if they connect together and take it from there. So here's what we've got printed so far we've got the bottom half and the top half could be either way I'm not too sure at the moment which way it's going to be up so the motor and gearbox obviously will sit inside this cavity. Here is the holding bit which I was showing you earlier it's got the bearings and the little uh, encoder wheel and this coupling so it's 
just got the pin going through PLA plastic so I'm not sure how well that's going to work. I've got another pin at the other end here. Ideally this whole thing would be metal but I don't have access to any metal working tools at all so I've got to print everything. So I'm hoping it's not going to put out too much torque and strip the whole thing out but we'll, we'll see how we go and maybe later on I need to pay for somebody to build the actual bit itself. But we'll see what happens. And inside this is our gearbox which we harvested from the uh, old tool. And what happens is this coupling goes in there like this, so it's the whole unit. I mean if this is made out of metal it could be half the length maybe because it would need all this plastic around. But anyway, it pops in and then we put it into the tool itself. It's got little keyways on there, it sits in like so. And if I turn this around, it hasn't changed, obviously. And on the top, we've got the sensor. So the sensor sits in this little cavity here. It's on its own little mounting bracket. And once that's all in place, we just squeeze it together. And the sensor is in. So that's going to be the whole unit. So this is going to do the back bit because the back bit's going to hold the circuit board underneath and the H bridge on top. So it's probably going to be about this long when it's finished. Like I say, it could be shorter if it was made out of metal, but it's not. Hopefully, we'll be seeing a video of me now turning this wheel and the screen changing with the Arduino test code which I've provided. So if that's all good, the next thing I do is print off the back ends here and a mount for the battery to go on. And here we have the entire shooting match. We've got the wheel attached, both the top and bottom back bits are done. Here's our connector for our peripherals if they, this thing works, and the contacts on the back for the battery. So the battery just will sit in there like that. And down the bottom got the plug for the computer to plug into. So we'll just um, I'm going to clamp it down on this desk here because I haven't made anything to hold it together because I'm not sure if it's going to work. If it's not going to work, I'm not going to persevere with this. Uh, but I'm going to clamp it down and just try and do a sim game to see if it'll, it'll do anything. Before we can even use the wheel, we need to install the firmware on that Leonardo. So this link will be in the show notes. And basically you just go to code and download zip and download that locally and unzip that folder. So on my other projects, if you've watched those videos, you would have seen me install the code onto the Arduino IDE and, and push it down that way, but this way we're just loading a hex file directly onto the Leonardo. And to do that we use all the software available in the download and we want to go to the Xloader, run this Xloader software and it comes up here and you just browse to this folder with the Leonardo files, choose the top one because it'll be the latest version, open it and then click on upload choosing the COM port that the Leonardo is connected to. You'll have to choose Leonardo from the list check the COM port and click upload and it flashes us directly to the Leonardo. Now we're ready to go and try it out. Hopefully you better see clearly enough what's happening here. I've got my wheel hooked up and the screen will be recording so it might be up in a corner or either way and um, it's sort of quite out of sync like I turn this more than what goes on the screen or vice versa but I guess there's some tuning involved but for the first go I'm okay with it. I've got no pedals or anything so I'm just going to use the keyboard for now to try and drive the car and we'll just see if this motor gives us any feedback. Nothing so far. No, I can feel it. It's pulling. It's pulling. It's definitely working. Oh, yep. Yeah. So, if we go to a corner, we should get a bit of feedback on this wheel, so I'll just let it go.
Yeah. And the clicking is the binding between the um, the motor and the uh, coupling I made, and I think uh, there must be I saw a spring in there, but I couldn't push it down. But obviously, when it's get too much drive, it's pushing apart, so there's too much torque going through at the moment. So I think the theory is good. It's it's going to work, but it's just going to take some tuning. Uh, I need to pull the top off this and just see what's going on in there. Um, but it sounds like those two the coupling and the motor, where they are, they're sort of jumping teeth. There's probably too much torque. It's definitely going to work. It's definitely it's definitely well within the realms of this motor to turn this steering wheel. It's just getting the coupling done right, and I can feel it fighting me when I'm driving. So. Uh, I need to work out how that software works and by the next time give it another test while I'm doing that I want to get the pedals going as well because it looks like this is going to work it'll be cool to get the pedals up and running and a handbrake so that'll happen in the next video